Even at SparkFun, conference rooms can be boring. Um, to combat that problem, I decided to come into this conference room and hang 72 light bulbs from the ceiling. Uh, I didn't just hang light bulbs from the ceiling, actually. Uh, it's part of a larger project to create an interactive space in the conference room. Uh, using a couple of our LED controller boards and uh, a couple boxes of cheap light bulbs, um, I was able to create sort of a lighting installation in this space um, that shows off uh, what you can do with just one Arduino and a lot of time. So this is basically the control panel for the whole project and uh, it's essentially a Bluetooth boombox. So it's got one of our RN52 Bluetooth breakouts and a couple of speakers and some buttons and you can connect to it using any Bluetooth device uh, like a cell phone or your laptop and actually play music to it and then the lights will react to the music. Now because you don't always want to be playing music in here uh, and also because there's so much computational power uh, in the Arduino that just playing music through here is kind of a waste of resources, I decided to give it um, more than one mode. And right now, uh, the second mode, which you can access by pressing this button, will actually uh, play Pong on the lights. So looking uh, up at the lights, you'd be able to see that uh, there's sort of a ball that bounces around, and then there's a paddle at one end that you control um, by getting closer to or farther from the wall. So it, the paddle sort of tracks you as you move side to side. It's a one player version of Pong and it doesn't keep score because it's really just sort of a time waster. Uh, you can come in here if you're bored and there's no one in the um, conference room and turn off the lights and play Pong. While the control panel allows the users to interact with the installation, all of the brains are actually in this cabinet in the corner of the room. Uh, the central controller for the whole project is actually just one of our 5 volt Arduino Pro Minis. And the way that that is controlling uh, 72 separate LEDs to varying levels of brightness is actually a chain of five of our TLC5940 PWM driver boards. And these boards are really great because it allows a controller to use just a couple of GPIO to control a huge amount of LEDs. The other obstacle in powering this many LEDs is actually driving enough current to them to light them up. Worst case scenario, you're actually lighting up 72 of these super bright LEDs all at once, so you need something that can back that up with a lot of amperage. So what I decided to do is to use a computer power supply. And this is just a computer PSU that I pulled out of an old uh, tower that we had sitting around here at the office. All of that is uh, plugged into a power strip inside the cabinet that's actually wired to a switch on the outside of the cabinet that allows you to power the whole project uh, on and off so that at night when uh, everyone leaves the office I can shut it off and it's not sitting here wasting power. As well as controlling all of the LEDs and storing all of the tables for the various animations, the Arduino is also taking input from various sensors. And I found that the best sensors for detecting people's um, location uh, in certain parts of the room is actually these ultrasonic range finders. So I chose two locations in the conference room along this wall, uh, one at the front and one at the back of the room, uh, to actually place these. And I just stuck them to the wall with a little bit of um, double-sided foam tape and uh, this is actually what allows you to play Pong on uh, using all of the LEDs as a display. And so when you're standing in line with this sensor, the Arduino knows how far you are from the wall, and so it can actually place the paddle in the right place on the Pong field. In the future, I could easily reprogram this whole thing to use these sensors to detect when someone walks into the room, or if uh, people say if someone on this end of the table is standing up or not. Um, so there are all sorts of things that you could do as long as you have a network of sensors in place. Right now, I'm using the ultrasonic range finders uh, as well as our um, spectrum shield. Uh, that's another sensor of sorts um, that I'm using to take the 
music input from the Bluetooth module and uh, chop it up into um, frequency bands so that I can display it on the light bulbs. I enlisted the help of some of my coworkers to actually take the bottom of the bulb out and then remove that rivet that's on the bottom of the light bulb that it usually acts as the positive connector. We replaced all of the innards of the light bulb with LEDs. So we just took these super bright white LEDs, um, poked them down into the light bulb and then filled it with hot glue. Uh, times 72 and we had um, LED light bulbs. Obviously these aren't the super fancy LED light bulbs that you would go and buy as a replacement for the lights in your house but they work great for this installation because they all run at 5 volts and I have uh, control over their brightness levels. The wiring harnesses are all Cat5 cables so it's just networking cable. Um, we bought a big box of like a thousand feet of Cat5 riser and um, I actually measured out all of the Cat5 and then zipped it together with zip ties and separated out all of the strands for each bulb uh, in my office. And then we came in one night to the conference room after work hours. Uh, I got a couple of guys to help me run all of the wires along the ceiling and to drop where all of the light bulbs were going to be. I actually came into the conference room with big rolls of wire that had the light bulbs already soldered in place. All we had to do was hang it from the ceiling. And then all of the wires run back up to the uh, main cabinet and they go into those um, TLC 5940 boards. Um, it is a big bundle of wire at one end of the room, um, but it's actually not that noticeable uh, because of the layer of light bulbs that are sort of um, attacking your field of vision. So uh, it's not like there's a whole bunch of ugly wire on the ceiling. And the Cat5 is a great way to wire up anything where you need a whole bunch of conductors, um, but you don't want to run like ribbon cable or something like that. This is working really well then.